Hey, this is Dave from ERC, and in this episode, we're going to install the electronics into the FT Legacy RC plane. So to start out with, I went and installed my control horns here on the elevator and on the rudder. And I just used some of this foam tack that I got from Stone Blue Airlines. You can get it in other places too, in lieu of hot melt. Also glued in the servos on both sides with this side of the servo being as close as I could to the horn over here to make the control rod shorter. And again, I use the same glue to glue them in. We just prepared the flight controller. So let's just very carefully go ahead and tin up these pads. Oh, all done. We'll get into this wiring later, but I just wanted to show you how it all looks when you get the wires on it. So now I'm getting ready to put this little plate on the bottom of the F411 wing flight controller and I'm just going to go ahead and put the standoffs on first and I'm attaching them to this side with a screw with a little bit of Loctite on it. Now I've got to get it mounted on my tray somewhere like that and get the receiver also mounted on there. Something like this. So I'll have to drill some holes in the tray and then use some tie wraps to hold it down. Okay, now I'm just tie wrapping these down. So I put a tie wrap around there. I also put a little bit of the foam tack underneath the receiver to help it stay down. And I'm just going to clip off the tie wrap. Like that. Alright, now I'm going to do basically the same thing to the flight controller. Alright, so that's pretty much it right there. And now it's ready to install into the plane. So our flight controller board is going to go right about in, you know, about that far up. It's going to be inside, of course, in a slot, but I'm just laying it on top to get some idea where the things are going to go. And you can see I've got the GPS right down in here with a tongue depressor going across it to hold it in. And then over here is the easy UHF antenna. Let's see if I can show you that. So it is right there, and I've got a popsicle stick going across it to hold in it. A little bit of glue, too. So here's the two wires here that I soldered and put heat shrink on, and that's for the elevator and rudder. So that's extended out. So now we're just giving it a test. I've been letting it warm up here and I actually do have six satellites right here. There's the OSD so it's working too. And you can see right here I've got six satellites going. There's my home arrow and my RSSI signal which doesn't go all the way up to 100. I think it's scaling but that's full. 81 right there and 12 volts on the battery and we got current percentage of the battery and then over here altitude and uh, on time and fly time milliamp hours used and then we've got the flight mode right here which is an acro that actually works too if I throw the switch so there's my three flight modes we've got enough satellites to arm now so let's try to arm it and try to run this motor also, we can check the two servos. Okay, coming down here, I'm just going to check the two servos. Now, the linkages aren't hooked up, but I can hear the... Both servos are working. All right, let's see if we can arm it. And move the stick over. And it says armed on the screen. You can see that, but it just says armed. Now, let's see if we can run the motor without getting in too much trouble. Just try to get a good grip on it here. There it is. Alright, now let's check the differential thrust so 
When I go left and right with the rudder, one way should make the motor stop and the other should make it go faster. But you have to be running a little bit to do it. So spinning up the motor. Alright, now I'm going to go left. See, left stops it. And then we'll go right. Right makes it go faster. And then the center is right there. So slow, center, faster. So we know that motor is working. Okay, so it looks like everything is working. I can go ahead and disconnect and pull the tray back out and put the bottom on it because I think we're good to go. Okay, I just punched out the three pieces that we're going to need and uh, that was in time lapse, but you got the idea. Now we just need to clean these up. I think what I'm going to do is work on the front first, do the front, and then we'll put on the bottom. Okay, before we glue this, we need to cut off a little piece right here, just enough so it fits in the fuselage. Take off a little piece there and a little piece here, like that. It'll be going up like that, so go ahead and hot melt it. Okay, just going to go ahead and give this a little bend. This is just supposed to have a little curvature to it. So before I go any further, I need to make this uh, landing gear mount out of this plywood and glue that together with some CA and some kicker. So we're going to do that next. Okay, that looks pretty good. I used the kicker right there at the end to make sure that it glued really firmly. And it was fast too, so it's already dry. Now we can go ahead and insert that into the fuselage on the bottom and then continue on with putting on the nose piece and the bottom tail piece. Okay, so I just test fitted this to make sure it was right. Put a little bit of glue on the edges, pressed it in there, and now I'm just rocking it back and forth. So that's pretty good. Now let's do the bottom. We're going to put the bottom on. We're going to start with this little piece right here, and it has a little flap that just goes over the edge of the bomb bay, right like that. So that's where we want to place this, right there. But for now, we just want to glue this section in. Now I can glue that little flap. Put a little bit of glue right on the edge of it. Like that. I get a piece of scrap foam here and just push it down. Now I had to cut a notch out right here on mine because I left the bottom open and uh, usually you would cut that when you were putting the tail in but I didn't do that so I had to cut a little notch. So I found I can just take some of this foam tack and where the paper didn't quite get down, you can just uh, apply a little of that. And it doesn't dry very fast, so this gives you time to 
press it down into place. Well, I think you can see after you work with it for a while, as it tacks up, that edge will fold right in there and look pretty good. So we also have to do our Bombay door. I might have missed that, so I'll just go ahead and hot melt that up. Okay, now we've got to put it on the bottom of the plane. So we want these two slots here to be towards the servo where the bomb bay door will open. Good enough for me. All right, now we can do some painting. So there's my first coat of paint on the FD Legacy. And for the next video, I plan on working on the wing and putting the electronics in that. I may also do another video that gives more detail on programming the flight controller and doing the wiring. So see you next time and don't forget to like and subscribe.